Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Brandon Money of the Centeno Schultz Clinic and Regenex Network. And in this video, we're going to be talking about golfer's elbow or medial epicondylitis, the uh, traditional term for it. There's a few other names, but uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. So a little bit of an outline to talk about what we're going to discuss today. What is medial epicondylitis? And again, I use those quotes because this condition does have several different names, but it does all mean basically the same thing. So how and why does it occur? How is it diagnosed? And then what are the treatment options if uh, you do encounter this in yourself or a family member? So that's me, Dr. Brandon Money. Uh, at the Centeno Schultz Clinic, I decided to do a fellowship after my residency training, which provided me with uh, additional training and learning in musculoskeletal diagnosis and treatment. Uh, that's what we focus on here. At the Centeno Schultz Clinic, we focus on muscles, nerves, joints, tendons, ligaments, the neuromusculoskeletal system, all of the above. So Interventional Orthobiologics Foundation, I'm also a member of that because it provides us with conferences and workshops in order to stay up to date on the latest in this field. This field is only about 15 or 20 years old, so things change on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis. And I'm also certified by the Titleist Performance Institute, which lets me have an understanding of how the golf swing and injuries in your body are related. And I am the only active certified uh, medical physician in the state of Colorado. And you can find me on Instagram. My professional account is golfdocusa, as you see in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Go ahead and follow me. I like to post fun things about golf and injuries and health and wellness. So medial epicondylitis, also known as golfer's elbow, also known as climber's elbow. I actually just started rock climbing recently. So I've been hearing that from uh, other people uh, in the climbing gym, also known as common flexor tendinosis. And I think that's the most appropriate, which we'll talk about shortly. So what is it? So it was actually first described about 100 and almost 40 years ago as uh, being related to tennis, which is funny because uh, tennis elbow is actually the outside of the elbow whereas we're talking about the inside of the elbow. Uh, it's an overuse syndrome of the flexor pronator mass. There's a number of different muscles that attach specifically on the inside of the elbow, and um, it involves degeneration of the tendons, and the body can't completely repair itself after these small injuries occur. It was actually initially thought to be an inflammatory disorder related to where the tendons connect to the bone, but now we know they're actually small tears or disruptions in the tendon fibers themselves. And I'll get into more about the incomplete repair process in just a few moments. So how is it diagnosed? Well, history and clinical exam, that's the number one thing. I was told a long time ago in medical school that if you just listen to the patient, they'll tell you everything you need to know. And the physical exam is critical in order to determine precisely what's going on, whether it's related to the muscles and tendons, the joints and ligaments, or the nerves. And more often than not, it's really a combination of uh, many of those things. So diagnostic, diagnostic ultrasound, we perform these in the office during your visit because that gives us the opportunity to see the tissues in real time. And we're also able to see how the tendons, ligaments, and other structures such as the joint respond under stress because you stress your body every single day when you're moving and doing the things that you wanna do. And then the MRI can sometimes be useful because it, it gives us the opportunity to see structures that we necessarily can't see on ultrasound. Ultrasound waves don't penetrate through bone, so we can't see how the bone looks on the ultrasound. So uh, this first image is uh, an ultrasound image uh, of the inside of the elbow. And I know it probably looks like a bunch of clouds or a thousand shades of gray, but in this first picture, you can actually see the flexor tendons attaching to the medial epicondyle. And then below the curved arrow, you can see some small black holes. And those are actually some small tears that we can see in the tendon. And the second image is an MRI of the elbow. So next to the smaller arrowhead on the left side, uh, you can see kind of a mix of uh, dark and light colors. Well, a normal tendon in that area would be a pretty solid shade of gray next to the bone. So this tells us there's some disruption of the tendon fibers. It's not fully torn and ripped off the bone, but it can definitely be a reason for pain. So how does this happen? Well, normally you get repetitive trauma without the body able to heal itself 100%. 
as we get older, unfortunately, our repair mechanisms that our body does have don't really work as well as they were when we were 15 or 16, as you probably noticed. And the tendons and ligaments themselves, they actually have poor blood supply compared to the muscles, for example. And so it can also be a result of loose ligament instability of the elbow. And this causes other structures like the tendons to work over time because we have ligaments both on the inside and the outside of our elbow. And they act like pieces of duct tape to hold the humerus, the upper arm bone, and the ulna and radius, the forearm bones together. When the ligaments become loose, they act more like rubber bands instead of duct tape, which really can't hold the bones together as well, just like a rubber band can't hold things together like a piece of duct tape can. So other elbow structures like the muscle and tendons have to help in trying to keep the elbow stable over and over and over again. And this happens every time you throw a ball, swing a golf club, turn a wrench, or brush your teeth all day, every day. And also we have to think about the nerves because the nerves supply uh, information from the neck and spinal cord to the structures in the arm. And if we think of the nerves in your neck like the circuit breaker in your house, it doesn't matter how many times you replace the light bulb if the problem is with the circuit. That's why in an evaluation, we'll likely take a look at the entire circuit of the arm during the exam to identify really what's going on and find the source of the problem. So these pictures are of some baseball pitchers and they create an tremendous amount of force at the inside of the elbow in order to be able to either throw 100 miles an hour or make the ball curve two or three feet. And there's no way I could ever get my arm into a position like this, just not possible. That's why I'm not a baseball pitcher. But now this image here, is of the ligament on the inside of the elbow called the ulnar collateral ligament. Baseball players know this ligament very well because when a baseball player gets what's called Tommy John surgery, this is actually what's getting repaired is this ligament. And you can see it's actually three different bands of ligament tissue that create a triangle to help stabilize that inside of the elbow. And as I said before, it doesn't necessarily have to be torn, just stretched a little bit and act more like a rubber band in order to develop problems in the elbow. So now let's, let's look at treatment options. You know, what are we gonna do for this? So classic treatment options, you go to your primary care, go to an orthopedic surgeon. You know, this is probably the order in which they're gonna do things. Go to some physical therapy, see if that helps. Try some bracing that can help offload some of the force off uh, that area of tendon. Try some NSAIDs like ibuprofen or naproxen. Well, these have actually been shown to negatively impact the GI system, the cardiovascular system, if, if used on a regular basis. So we really wanna try to stay away from those. Uh, steroid injections would be the next line. Um, steroid injections have been shown maybe to help mask the pain for a short amount of time, but it really does nothing to actually heal the tears in the tendon. And that's the focus of the issue. And some research has actually shown that these injections can cause more tendon injury over time. And surgery, absolute last resort, especially for golfer's elbow, and we'll get into a study that uh, compares surgery and uh, another type of treatment in just a minute. So let's not think about those. Now let's think about the Regenex different. And you'll see at the beginning, the first two things are the same. We're gonna try physical therapy first if you haven't tried that. We're gonna try bracing if you haven't tried that. I wanna do as minimally things as possible in order to get you healthy and get you back doing the things you wanna do. Uh, we recommend some natural supplements like turmeric, fish oil, bromelain, which can help with pain and inflammation. And some of the uh, injection treatment options that we do offer, first starting with prolotherapy, which is the most mild treatment option. Prolotherapy is actually a sugar water that's been around for about 100 years that uh, stimulates the body's healing response in areas that are treated. And platelet-rich plasma, or commonly known as PRP, um, it comes from your own blood. And as mentioned before, it has those growth factors or healing factors to uh, help your body heal itself. And then the strongest uh, treatment that we do offer is bone marrow concentrate, which does contain mesenchymal stem cells, as well as platelets and some other cells in order to give your best opportunity to heal at the highest level. So these are a few different studies. Uh, this first one is on prolotherapy. It's on lateral epicondylitis or ten tennis elbow on the other side of the elbow. But the treatments themselves are very similar. 
So they had 84 patients that were diagnosed. They went through three different rounds of prolotherapy injections. Um, their pain score dropped from uh, almost seven to three after the last injection. And they did find that those that didn't have tears as seen on ultrasound actually did better than those that did have tears. And nine months after the injections, 80% of uh, those 84 patients did have sustained improvement, which is pretty good considering that's the most mild treatment option that we do offer. Now, this one here, I found it very interesting. They compared PRP in one group to surgery in another group. And the type one medial epicondylitis basically just means that the uh, nerve that's next to that area isn't involved. So again, one group treated with PRP, another with surgery. So they calculated the average days to they have full range of motion in their elbow, 42 days PRP group, 96 days surgery group. They looked at the number of days until they were completely pain-free, 56 days versus 108 days in the surgery group. And they also found that there was no difference in what was called a successful outcome. So again, surgery probably not needed for an issue like this. And then this is a study that uh, some of our doctors and scientists here in our uh, facility uh, are still doing right now, actually. Um, this was a midterm analysis. This looks at the rotator cuff, but you can see here that the uh, rotator cuff is a bunch of muscles and tendons that attach to the upper part of the arm to help keep it stable, similar to the elbow. So tendons are very similar regardless of where they are, the structure, the composition of them. So we can kind of take from this. So they did bone marrow concentrate plus platelets that were injected into a torn supraspinatus tendon, which is the major rotator cuff tendon. And uh, they compared that to another group that just did physical therapy. Well, there was improved pain and function at both three month and six month mark compared to the exercise group. And after two years, the average rate of improvement was 89% improvement, phenomenal. So let's look at what to expect during your visit here. So number one, someone who will listen to you. I think that's something that's really been lost in the, the medical world is, as most clinics seem like there's never enough time for patients to actually tell the doctor what's going on. And we'll do a thorough evaluation of your concerns. We spend 40 minutes to an hour with all of our new patients. So we do have the time and the opportunity to listen what's going on and then address those concerns. If you have imaging, MRI, x-rays, et cetera, we'll go over that. We review all the images ourselves. We don't rely on radiology reports uh, in order to identify what's going on. We'll do a diagnostic ultrasound if indicated in the office. And that's most of the patients that do get one because that gives us more information and we're able to stress those tissues uh, while we're looking at them in real time. And then we'll do a plan of action. Sometimes it might involve therapy bracing, supplements, but you will get a personalized treatment plan. And I tell patients that it's not one size fits all, but it's whatever size fits you. You're unlike anybody else that's ever been through these doors before. So you need a treatment plan that is tailored to you. And in addition to that, I'll provide you with a candidacy rating. If I don't think there's a good chance you'll benefit from our treatment options, I'll tell you. If I think there's a great chance, I'll tell you. If I think there's a severe problem that requires an urgent surgical evaluation, I'll try and call a surgeon right now and get them on the phone today to coordinate an appointment for you. Because ultimately, I want what's best for you in order to get you back to doing the things that you love. So references that I took from some of those uh, research studies. And that's me. This is our office number here, uh, big numbers. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, either in person or via telemedicine, which we do very often because a lot of our patients are from out of state or out of country, please call this number. Our patient educators can help answer any questions that you may have as well. And if they can't answer it, they'll contact me and I'll try and answer it to the best of my ability. Hope you guys have a great day and thank you so much for watching.